Stroke surveillance tells us about the numbers of strokes that happen, the risk factors for stroke, and what happens to the people that have stroke. The best stroke surveillance system should cover the entire country and generate data regularly. In this commission, we examine the state of national stroke surveillance systems globally by looking at existing data and talking to experts all over the world on availability of national systems for monitoring stroke incidents, risk factors, and deaths due to stroke. We found that few countries are systems optimal for national stroke surveillance. For instance, most national stroke registries do not cover the entire country. Many countries do not regularly measure the most important stroke risk factors, and only two-thirds of member countries or territories submitted mortality data to the WHO in the past three decades. Experts from around the world told us that the key facilitators of having up-to-date and accessible national data on stroke included having adequate funding and training to collect the data and using digital approaches, including electronic medical records and death registries to capture stroke events. The best examples of these national surveillance systems then use the data to raise awareness of stroke and its risk factors in the community, but also within government to improve the prevention and treatment of stroke. Our recommendations from the Commission to boost the global surveillance of stroke include that all countries should incorporate stroke surveillance into their national action plans, develop low-cost ongoing stroke surveillance systems, ideally using digital approaches to capture stroke events, and embed the ongoing collection of stroke risk factors into existing data collection systems, for example, in the national census. Together, these initiatives will generate the data that is required to inform national policies to reduce the burden of stroke. Every three seconds, someone in the world is struck by a stroke, and the lifetime risk of stroke is now one in four people more than 60% of all strokes are happening in people under the age of 70, with almost 90% of the stroke burden residing in low to middle income countries. Globally, stroke already cost us about 900 billion US dollars a year, and the current stroke burden is projected to double by 2050. In this report, Global experts developed solution for stroke prevention improvement. We recommend that emphasis in primary stroke prevention should be placed on population-wide preventative strategies across the lifespan. Preventative strategies on the individual level should be applied to people at any level of increased risk of stroke and cardiovascular disease, be freely accessible and supported by universal health coverage and access to affordable medications and procedures, including validated digital tools for lay people and health professionals. Governments should allocate a fixed proportion of annual health funding for prevention of stroke, which could come from taxation on tobacco, salt, sugar, and alcohol. Prior to 1995, stroke had no definitive treatment. The patients arrive at the hospitals and wait in lines for hours to be evaluated, to do CT scan, and to receive aspirin to prevent another stroke without any effective treatment. In 1995, a pivotal study of thrombolytic medication revolutionized the history of stroke care and the way we manage stroke has changed forever. The concept of Time's Brain became a guide to the organization of the entire chain of stroke care, starting by the stroke unit with a well-trained multidisciplinary team, the most powerful strategy and the core of acute care for all stroke patients, also facilitating the implementation of a reperfusion therapy, as thrombolysis and thrombectomy, and early rehabilitation. A strong educational program to the entire network is fundamental to put recommendations into practice, including the education of the patients and ambulance. Telemedicine is an extraordinary tool to decrease distance 
to and to bring the expertise in real time to areas without specialists, increasing the access to reperfusion therapy. And finally, the certification of stroke centers is critical to ensure that hospitals implement and monitor all priority evidence-based strategies that change the natural history of the stroke, reducing mortality and disability. Stroke is the third leading cause of disability worldwide, with up to 80% of stroke survivors living with disability. Stroke rehabilitation seeks to improve quality of life, using therapies to promote recovery and adaptation. Compared to other stroke services, rehabilitation is the least available worldwide, with many countries having none. To improve the quality of life and restore meaning for stroke survivors worldwide, we recommend the establishment of multidisciplinary rehabilitation services in diverse settings, inpatient, outpatient, community-based settings across the globe. Adaptation of evidence-based pragmatic solutions to the local context. Investment in research to generate innovative, affordable, and cost-effective interventions. Public awareness to improve demand for rehabilitation services. Advocacy to mobilize resources for multidisciplinary rehabilitation, especially in low- and middle-income countries. Training of rehabilitation professionals. Use of digital solutions to improve training and extend the use of assessment tools to monitor improvement in functioning and quality of life. Above all, synergy with international initiatives, including the WHO Intersectoral Global Action Plan, the WHO Rehabilitation 2030, and of course, the World Federation for New Rehabilitation. The gaps in stroke services across the world are catastrophic. We need a drastic improvement today, not in 10 years. Time is brain, but few stroke patients arrive on time to the right hospital. Huge efforts have been made to establish stroke services worldwide, but unfortunately, from the discovery of new evidence to the implementation, we wait many years, sometimes decades, mainly in low- and middle-income countries. Almost 30 years after thrombolytic therapy was approved to decrease disability, there are numerous countries without the treatment. We often hear that for poor countries, only prevention could be implemented. This is not quite right, as many strokes are happening right now, and you cannot accept to have a healthcare system where treatment availability distinguishes between rich and poor people, determining their destinies and their chance of becoming disabled or not, alive or dead. The World Stroke Organization Lancet Commission was created to show that it's possible to change this reality, starting from the fundamental evaluation of the global situation of stroke care, showing good examples of success, describing innovative and pragmatic solutions to fill the gaps, and providing reasons and evidence to facilitate discussion for implementation with policymakers and other stakeholders. The burden of stroke is disproportionately high in low and middle countries. The health system needs to gear up in a holistic way to tackle this huge burden of stroke. Highest priority should be given for the cost effective interventions as recommended by W2 and Appendix 3. Countries should focus on establishing stroke units at all levels of healthcare with access to pre acute treatments like intravenous hormolysis and uh, clotted even procedures. Member countries need to contextualize the universal healthcare packages for stroke management in the entire continuum of care, including community integration and social support. There is an urgent need for advancing resource allocation, cost shifting, and workforce capacity building in the areas of acute care, rehabilitation, and prevention. We should not forget the private health sector, particularly the private hospital and also the private insurance agencies. Uh, they should include the stroke management and the reimbursement packages. We can't do it alone. The government, the professional organization, NGOs, and the stroke support groups should work together to improve their stroke care globally. This Lancet Commission has involved a very large number of stakeholders making this the largest ever roadmap for stroke prevention and care on a global scale. 
It's been intense work over a very long period, and we are extremely pleased now to launch this publication at the World Stroke Congress. However, this publication does not mean the end. Instead, it means the start of an implementation process that needs to be multi-sectorial. We have pointed out the many obstacles, the many difficulties that there are, but we also point to solutions, pragmatic solutions and possibilities. So now the time is to scale up the efforts of stroke to really see that this comes out into clinical practice. The World Stroke Organization will have a leading role in this process, along with its many partners. We need your help and support. And finally, my word of thanks to all of you who have contributed to this task. Thank you.